Hi Church, how are you all doing today? My name is Rebecca uh, and I'm here with you to share a devotion on community. So I'm going to pull out a story from the Bible about community, um, get a bit into it and then share what community means to me. So let's get started. So I believe one of the great stories about community in the Bible uh, is about the paralysed man and the friends who brought him to Jesus. So it says in uh, Mark 2, 1-8, I'm going to read from the NLT version. When Jesus re returned to Capernaum, believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralysed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralysed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. So let's just imagine for a bit a second um, what life was like for this paralytic person in the ancient world. So someone had to feed him, they had to carry him, had to clothe him so, so much more. Nothing could be done medically, there was no surgeries, no rehab programs, no treatment centres, nothing. Anyone in this man's condition had to go through life as a beggar, pretty much. They were laid by the side of the road by someone and be dependent on people dropping coins beside him to live another day. He had no money, no job, and seemingly not much of a future. But what he did have going for him was a bunch of amazing friends. He was in one of the best small groups of all time. In one sense, the whole story is because of, the whole story takes place because of his friends. And without his friends, he would have never have made it to Jesus and therefore never would have got healed. And then, but it didn't happen just instantly like that. He didn't meet some people. They then just picked him up and took him straight to Jesus. It was the development of these friendships and that didn't happen accidentally. Because of his physical condition, the deck was stacked against him pretty much and stacked against any sort of friendships emerging at all. But here's this little band of men who refused to let any obstacle stop them. And this is the key point that their little group of mates, their small group, the, the, the pals that had his back, it didn't come by accident. People rarely drift into deep community like these guys did for what they did for his friend and got into Jesus. One of the most countercultural statements in scripture is a description of the early church. Um, in speaking of the people's oneness of heart and mind, the writer, it's in Acts, says, they met together daily. They worshiped together, ate together, prayed together on a daily basis. No wonder they were so close. Every single day, hanging out with each other, praying together, worshiping together, and more importantly, having food together. We all know over a good meal, the best friendships can be built. We try to create a first century community like the community we see in the early church and the one with, with these guys and his mates, but on a 21st century timetable, and it just doesn't work. Maybe the most significant barrier to deep connectedness for most of us is simply the pace of our lives. How often do you hear or say, I hands up, one for this, we've got to get together soon, or let's do lunch in a few weeks when things settle down. The requirement for true intimacy is unhurried time. If you think you can fit a deep community into the cracks of an overloaded schedule, I think again, you can't do community in a hurry. Many people lack great friends for, for this simple reason, that they have never made pursuing community a high priority. Now, when I moved away from home to university um, a good few years ago, uh, I had to choose to make an effort to build a community. Yes, I was put in halls and with strangers that I didn't know, but we weren't necessarily going to be close community until unless we all made an effort to do that. This meant prioritising people and most importantly, putting myself out of my comfort zone and out there with new people. It looked like 
popping around someone's house for a brew that I didn't know loads and, and allowing to build that, that friendship. It meant joining a brand new church and a brand new small group and getting to know people from, from that space. People with different backgrounds, not they weren't at university necessarily, and really opening myself to build up new community in a brand new place I was in. And from doing this, I can confirm my community became strong, loving, and was always there for me. We moved past the awkwardness of not knowing each other very well to enjoying spending time together, getting to know each other lots and lots and, and really deeply, and building that deep community, like the deep community that the paralysed man had. Church, read over that scripture again and think about some people you want in your community that you're going to invest in. And right now, contact them, ring them, drop them a text and get a date booked in. Don't say at some point or in the future, message them and get a date booked in to hang out. And if you're new to our church or you don't really know anyone, then jump on our website and look out for the many small groups full of people wanting deep community with you, you watching this devotion right now. There is people out there who want deep community with you. Remember church, it won't happen in a hurried way and we need to just take time and prioritise it. Thanks church. Speak soon.